Hello. This will be a series of lectures on the subject of machine learning. The goal here will be to explain machine learning to people who are not quite in this area of research. Instead, the intended audience here are either people whose research is outside of computer science and machine learning, or people who are just simply interested in the subject. So let's get to it. Machine learning is a hot topic in computer science these days. If I had to describe it in a single sentence, I would probably say that it is a subject in which you write algorithms that can automatically make sense of some kind of data. In that sense, it's probably best thought of as being at the intersection of statistics and computer science. So in this first lecture, let's look at a couple of machine learning applications to get a feel for what the subject is really about. So here's a very standard machine learning problem. Suppose I give you a large data set of DNA sequences, or some gene expression data, from say 1,000 people. Not only that, but for every person I can tell you if they have some type of cancer or not. Of course, a natural question that arises then is, can you use this data set somehow to predict if some other person has cancer or not? This task is what we call in machine learning a classification task. Basically, you're given some training data, which in this case comes in form of the 1000 DNA sequences, and you're also given some labels. In this case, the labels indicate whether or not each sequence is associated with cancer. The task of a machine learning algorithm then is to go through this data and figure out a classification rule that could help you diagnose patients in the future. So if you're later given some test data, such as new patients and their DNA sequences, you can use this rule to predict whether or not they are likely to have cancer. Many important problems in the real world can be formalized as a classification task. Here's an example of a test classification problem that Google has to deal with. What Google does is that it crawls around the web looking for news articles, to include them later in Google News. Now, once they find something that looks like an article, they have to automatically infer many things about the article based on its text. For example, one of the important things that they want to infer is the type of article that it is. Is this article about sports, world news, physics, entertainment, etc. This kind of a classification task is well suited for a machine learning approach because large amount of example data is easy to obtain. Basically what you do is you collect a large training set of articles from blogs or standard news websites and label them all somehow according to their category. You can then come up with a machine learning algorithm that inspects all this training data and looks for patterns that can help you distinguish between different categories. Netflix is another great example. They organized a competition for researchers in machine learning that was worth $1 million. That's how much money your machine learning knowledge could be worth. Here's the problem that they needed help with. When you first sign up for Netflix, they get you to rate a couple of movies that you've seen before. And the reason they do this is that they are using a machine learning algorithm in the background to later predict the movies that you are also likely to enjoy. Perhaps we will one day get to the point where I can explain this million dollar solution to you. But for now, note that this is not a classification task anymore, but it is something that we call regression. Basically, the task here is to figure out a score anywhere between 0 and 5 that a person would assign to every movie. Here's one example from Vision. This is an area that I particularly enjoy working in. The current trend in Vision is to use machine learning for everything. But here's one example of an application that you may be familiar with. If you have one of those cameras that automatically detects faces, you may be surprised to learn that the camera is most likely using the Viola Jones detector that was trained using machine learning. Essentially what they did was they collected a very large database of images of faces and images of non-faces. This then became just a standard classification task. The contribution of Viola Jones was to come up with a learning algorithm that could go through all these images and figure out a way of telling them apart. Once you have the classifier that can check if there is a face inside a box, you simply slide that classifier through the entire image at every position and at every scale and mark the locations that were classified as a face with the highest probability. Here's one more practical example from Vision. It turns out that the post office uses machine learning to automatically read the zip code on the mail that you send out. Essentially, they have a way of finding the zip code on the envelope and segmenting out the digits. But the problem is in classifying every tiny box of black blob, which is really just a two-dimensional array of pixel values, into a digit. One of the best systems for doing this is actually a giant neural network that was trained using machine learning algorithm. What they did was that they collected thousands of images of digits and labeled them by hand. This then became the training set for the neural network that they came up with. Machine learning is also used in speech recognition. When you speak to your computer or to your phone, there is an algorithm inside there that automatically classifies the kinds of sounds that you are making. The software most often works on level of phonemes, such as for example SO and Z. 
If it classifies these phonemes correctly over time, it can often guess what you are trying to say. You may have noticed that these systems often work out of the box because they already train them on many average people, but you can also get them to listen to you to improve the performance. Essentially what the software then does is that as you read a sentence to it, it builds an additional training set for every phoneme that it hears from you and uses that to augment the classifier. Here's another example of a very successful application of machine learning. You maybe wouldn't have guessed it, but a machine learning algorithm is at the heart of how Microsoft Connect works. Here's an example of an image that Connect sees at any point in time. Basically, it sees the depth in front of it. Its task is to figure out the exact pose of a person from this array of depth data. And you may have guessed it, but the way they approached this problem is to treat it as a classification task. They collected a huge database of people of all sizes and proportions doing all kinds of movements in front of the Connect. Then, they labeled all pixels that make up their bodies into one of 31 body parts that they defined. The body parts are shown in colors in this image. Now, once you have this large training set of little patches of depth values associated with the body part, you can train a classifier that can later recognize similar patches in a new image. From this, you can eventually figure out the pose. Here's my last example with a bit of a different flavor. What you see here is a helicopter flying around. Now, the interesting part here is that the helicopter is actually flying all by itself, doing all kinds of acrobatic maneuvers. The way that the researchers at Stanford got this helicopter to do this is also by using machine learning. They got an expert to fly around the helicopter for a while using remote control, and they recorded the exact position and accelerations of the helicopter over time. From this data, they were able to learn how to perform the maneuvers that the expert performed, and then eventually even execute them with more precision than the expert could ever achieve. This kind of a task comes from the domain of reinforcement learning, which we may also end up covering later. So there you have it. These are just some of the examples that I came up with, and I have to stop now in the interest of time. I hope I convinced you that machine learning is an extremely exciting and interdisciplinary subject with many real-world applications. In the course of the following lectures, I hope to go deeper into some of the methods that I've shown you here to get you properly acquainted with the subject. Now, maybe you notice the general theme throughout everything that I've shown you. Machine learning is really about taking many examples of something, be it DNA sequences, text articles, movie ratings, images, sound, doesn't matter, and generalizing from them in some way so that you can make judgments about future data. And for the purposes of this video, I hope you appreciate the fact that the way I've chosen to explain machine learning to you is also by giving you a lot of examples. So I'll see you later, and bye-bye.